Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. And let us pray together and center our hearts on God, saying, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from scripture. A reading from the prophet Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God. 
for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink the wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. i 
stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be as when a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, Throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, let me be what you make of me. While you be what I love. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, friends, today we get some wicked readings uh, from the lectionary that are delivered to us today. And I feel like I need like two hours with you to straighten them all out and to um, pull out some different theological strands that I think are, are important for the text before us, uh, but since I don't have two hours, well, I mean, I guess we, I guess we could. <laughs> Just at 11 more people will come in, and I'll still be talking, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, instead, I want to, I want to shake this, uh, I want to shake this reading and these set of readings a little bit for us, just by, um, by helping us think about the context of which they were delivered, and like the starting place at which we might, um, uh, enter into the text, and the way to do that is going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit strange, uh, especially if you're an OSU fan. So I apologize to you, but I'm going to start with a short video. Don't do it. Don't do it. 
So I didn't play that just because it's like football season and we're in Oklahoma and it's fall, um, uh, but because it's pretty important, I think, to the part of the intent, but that Jesus wants to communicate to us through this parable of the talents that he delivers. Because Jesus' parable today is supposed to get us fired up. Uh, I'll explain. Uh, I promise. Uh, did you notice in, uh, in, uh, in the video, the Sooner ritual before entering uh, the field and leaving the, the locker room. Did you see what they did? They were all touching the sign, play like a champion. Now, I don't know. I'm sure that in Stillwater they have something, something similar. I just don't know their tribal ways there. Um, but play like a champion. This is their sending forth. This is their commissioning before they step out of the safety of the locker room and onto the field. Now, at Cassidy School, where Kirsten is uh, the assistant chaplain, the head chaplain there has put something similar above all the doors uh, exiting the chapel. Uh, Father Tim Sean, he has put up the words, uh, blessed to bless, above all their doorways. And he kind of playfully encourages the students as they leave chapel to jump up and touch that. And some of them do. I've seen them do that when I've been up there, to touch that. As they're commissioning and they're sending forth, you are blessed to blessed. You are the hands and feet of Christ in the world. This is how we are to live as disciples. And this commissioning, blessed to bless, it begins all the way back in Genesis chapter 11 with the calling of Abram and Sarai, who are called on a journey with God, a journey to trust, a journey of trust and of grace. And God chooses them. It's completely one-sided. They don't do anything to earn being chosen. They don't apply or anything like that. God just kind of plucks them up and says, I choose you and I will bless you. And through you, I will bless many nations of the earth. Abraham and Sarah are called. They are blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to bless. And Israel's calling then throughout the rest of Scripture is to be faithful to this calling and to be the light to the world. Now that, it all begins with an act of grace of God choosing Israel. And that act of grace is represented in our parable today, the parable of the talents, by the abundant gifts that the master gives to the servants. One talent in the first century, in Jesus' time, is worth about 20 years' worth of wages. Uh, That's a lot. Now, that's just one person. Now, two talents, that's 40 years. Five talents, that's 100 years of wages. They're, these are enormous gifts that the master is entrusting the people to steward. Now, understanding the importance of stewarding these gifts that God has given us, this is the purpose behind the parable, particularly stewarding the gift of grace, the grace of life, of God's goodness in our lives. We could make this parable just about money or about skills and talents, but it's just a lot bigger than that. It's a parable about using the gift of our life and recognizing that it is all gift. Your life is all grace. And then responding to that grace and responding to that gift of God by letting it expand in you and through you so that you might be a blessing to others. Let your light shine, Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount. Don't hide it under a bushel basket, but let it shine. He said that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that's breaking into our world and growing and growing and growing. Be like the mustard seed. Let the kingdom, let grace flow into you and overflow out of you to be a blessing to others. This has been Jesus' message throughout the Gospel of Matthew. But the judgmental tone of the reading today catches us off guard and it's meant to. It's meant to, to shake us awake like last week's reading. Anytime there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, we're shaken, right? And so this is Jesus waking up his audiences. And I think it's a parable that is meant for several audiences, each of which has its own 
purpose. So the first audience and the first purpose is to be an admonition to the religious leaders of Jesus' day. Matthew has spent several chapters leading up to chapter 25 uh, telling story after story about the scribes and the Pharisees and the priests of the temple and how they are questioning Jesus and his authority. And these are the supposed religious experts of their day, and yet they keep missing all the good stuff that Jesus is doing. They are blind to it. They are far more concerned with getting all the rules right and pointing out all the ways that Jesus is messing up the rules. They are not so much concerned with the inner transformation that this, these rules, this law of Moses is supposed to bring about inside of them. Uh, when the, the transformation that happens when God's grace is received and overflows out of us. So they keep tally of all the mess ups and the rules. They kind of see the law as an examination. And so they keep track not only of Jesus' mess ups, but also all the people. And they lay heavy burdens, especially on the poor, Jesus said. So in the chapters leading up to the reading today, Jesus has given teachings then about wicked tenants, about people who don't understand how to take care of what God has given them, about people who thought they had a place of honor at the banquet, but ended up missing the banquet altogether. He's compared these religious leaders to whitewashed tombs that are beautiful and polished on the outside, but on the inside full of stink and death. Jesus has a flair for the dramatic. Likewise, this parable has a bit of flair for the dramatic. But the critique is that the religious authorities who had been given so much, the law of Moses, the temple, which represents the very presence of God, the mantle to be a blessing to the nations, and they had buried all of it in the ground. They hadn't realized the significance of God's grace in their life, grace that had been given to them as a gift. Their light was under a bushel basket. Their mustard seed was scattered on rocky soil. They were not stewarding the gifts that they had been given. They weren't doing their job. But fear not, Jesus says in the parable. Because while they may have buried their calling, blessed to bless, God is still God and God is still at work by other means. Grace was given to more than just the religious authorities. So the second purpose of the parable, the second audience, was to be an encouragement to those who did recognize God's grace at work in Jesus. It was to be an encouragement for those who would remain faithful to him all the way to his death, which is just a day or two away at this point. And it was also to be an encouragement to those who would respond to the gospel after Jesus' resurrection. Now, many of the disciples and the people who uh, who came to, to Christ in the early church, they were not seen as righteous or holy by the religious leaders of Jesus' day. They were failing the examination of the Pharisees. Remember, Jesus went first to sinners and tax collectors, to the sick and the unclean and the outcast, to those who were living in a literal weeping and gnashing of teeth, and he pulled them up and dusted them off and cleaned them up and gave them hope. And here he is, days away from the cross, where he too will encounter the outer darkness and feel so far away from God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He is in the literal uh, outer darkness in that time, but only to be resurrected as a means of redemption and hope for all. Through his life, his death, his resurrection, Jesus reminds so many people of the abundant grace that God has given them and that God then releases them to go and to be a blessing to others. To those who have, to those who get this kingdom of God stuff that is breaking in, more will be given, the parable says. And that is the hope. And so the third purpose of the parable, the third audience is us, the future church, those who would come after Jesus and the disciples. And the parable reminds us first to be humble about our faith. Not to be so wrapped up in getting everything right or being right or looking good like the Pharisees of Jesus' day. That we are blind to the grace that is given us, the life that's given us, uh, that we fail to steward and then eventually return that life to God. So be humble as religious people and be faithful. Be faithful, knowing that we have been given an inheritance. We have been given a calling, blessed to bless. We can't hide our light. We can't bury the grace we've been given. 
We've got to share that grace and we've got to let it spread like wildfire. We, the church, are the mustard seed that grows and grows and grows as the kingdom of God breaks in into this broken yet beautiful world. So this passage is meant to encourage us to see the grace of our lives. And like a pregame rally, to those who have, more will be given. So let's, let our bless, let's use our blessings to bless. Let's get fired up and get out there and to be the light and to be the grace and to be a blessing. And friends, even in a year like 2020, we can step back amidst the chaos and recognize God's grace. Just to be alive, to draw breath, is a reminder that we have been given so much. And every day we have chances to make decisions about how to honor the gift of our life. We make choices to steward our body, our mental health, our emotional health. We search for those sacramental moments of our lives, and we nurture God's presence in our life through our spiritual awareness. We recognize the gifts of relationships, of friends, of family, of community, even when we can't see them as much as we like face-to-face. And yes, 2020 has not been an ideal year, but Jesus gives us a lesson about grace and blessing multiplying right before his death. He gives us this assurance in a very uncertain time in his life. He gives us this encouragement that God's grace continues to grow and grow and expand through people of faith through whom the gift is given. I'm reminded, especially this year, of Paul's words uh, that strike a similar tone. Paul says to rejoice always. Paul tells us to rejoice and to give thanks to God in all things. Not for all things. Not all things do we need to give thanks for. Not everything is uh, a thanksgiving, especially in a year like this. But nonetheless, in all things, we can give thanks because we have been given an abundance of talents from God an abundance of grace from God, an abundance of presence from God. No matter what is going on in our lives, we're called to see that, to recognize it, and to let it grow in us and then overflow out of us so that the grace that you have been given can be a blessing to others. That's the calling, friends. That's the kingdom of God. As our worship ends today and as you are sent forth, whether you're at home or In the sanctuary, as you leave your home, as you leave our church, live into this calling. We are sending you forth. Play like a champion. Be encouraged in all things and through all things that you are blessed by God and you are blessed to bless. It's game day, friends. So let's be church. Amen. I'd invite you to stand with me and let us confess our faith and root ourselves in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as we pray together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, singing. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me. Sing that with us. God, the creator and preserver of all, 
We pray for all people throughout the world, especially those in need through famine, war, or disaster. Make your ways known upon earth, O God, your saving power among all people. Help us to lighten their burden and to seek justice and peace for all. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that all who call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in holiness of life. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ and one another and love as he loves us. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, singing. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in these troubles, and bless those who care for them. We remember especially the needs and concerns of this community as we lift up to you Don, Scott, Susie, Sherry, Rick, Deidre, Howard, Bonnie, Leanne, Austin, Laura, Robert, and family, Adrian, Daryl, Oliver, Jeannie, Maxine, Ike, Alan and Bethany, Kimberly, Chadwick, the Horton family, Ernestine, Deanne, Carolyn, Melvin, Miranda, Kathy, Reba and Lynn, Kathy and Ronald, Jesse, Lisa, Rex and Danny, Kent, Kelly, Barbara, Carolyn, Lucille, Clay and Sarah, Joseph, Alice, Kenny, Larry, Virginia, Jackie, Betty, all affected by COVID. And we pray also for the healing and unity of our nation. We remember those who have died, especially Leroy. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We especially lift up to you the many blessings and thanksgivings of this life. And we thank you today especially for Alma and AJ's visas coming through and their safe travel here to Oklahoma. Help us to remember that all good gifts come from you alone. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord singing. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in everlasting life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And greet one another in the name of Christ. And we wish Peace to our musicians, peace to those of you joining us online, uh, we're, and please be seated, friends. Uh, I just have a couple announcements that I'd like to make. Um, one is that we are, we are very much aware that uh, Canadian County and Oklahoma County and like just about all the other counties in Oklahoma are now in that kind of red category, and so 
Um, as we're entering into flu season and COVID is ticking up, we are going to make an, a, an announcement this week, just uh, tweaking a couple of our procedures and things, primarily that we're going to uh, be spacing out our chairs even more uh, and limiting attendance by about 20% less. So uh, it's not so much a problem at the 9 o'clock service, but the 11, we are kind of nearing that capacity that we had set, and uh, we want to just lower that a little bit so that people can spread out even more. So in the coming weeks, and really the next few months, until things, I think, start to settle down more, we would very much appreciate people re- pre-registering online, uh, and if you, I mean, maybe some people at home uh, attend at 11 in person, and they're just tuning in at 9, we'd, we're kind of going to encourage a few more people to come to this 9 o'clock service to balance out our numbers a little bit. Uh, we do believe that our uh, procedures have been keeping us safe. We've had no community spread of people getting COVID at church. So I think masks and distancing and all these things that we're doing do matter and have uh, made a huge impact and difference in making Grace Church a safe place to worship in person. Uh, but we want to make sure that we continue that good track record. And so we want to uh, be careful and cognizant of what's going on in our community. Schools are going virtual. We don't want to stop doing in person, but those things are going to help us continue to be able to maintain that as we go forward. So, uh, so stay tuned for announcements. That's all going to kind of start next week uh, with that, uh, that little reduction in capacity. Um, this week, we are, uh, so we're starting a new discipleship group series on Wednesday nights, so some of you might want to hop into that. We're starting a book on, on Advent. It's a, a collection of sermons and essays about the season of Advent and this pre-Advent season that we're in and some of the kind of dark readings that we have. And so we're going to be studying that a little bit more in depth. And so um, that is a group that meets by Zoom. I would love to give you more details about that. If uh, you'd like to send us a Facebook message to Grace, at Grace Church or to me or uh, catch me after the service, I'll give you all the details about that. It's also in our e-news. And then lastly, today is, one of, is our announcement Sunday for our capital campaign. So I want to invite up Brian Parker, who's our senior warden, uh, up to the lectern. Uh, to give us uh, kind of an, an announcement of all the gifts that have come in for our Growing in Grace campaign and where we are. Do you have your money? You want a copy? <laughs> Thank you. All right, perfect. Um, as the senior warden for Grace Church and, and a member of the Bishop's Committee and also on the Capital Campaign, um, this whole process has been humbling and been absolutely amazing to watch um, our community respond in the ways that they have in this time. Um, and it's been a long process and we have even um, a bright future ahead of us, but we have had 54 households give a total of $1,053,465 in advance gifts and three-year commitments. So that is absolutely incredible let's get let's clap that's amazing so we continue as a capital campaign committee and as your bishops committee um, continue to um, accept your prayers and your support as we launch into the next step in the next season of this journey but thank you for all of you that have given um, and all of you that continue to give in so many ways to this community and what this community is all about. So we can't do it without you. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you to everybody that's been a part of this uh, from our campaign committee, uh, our bishops committee, uh, for many members of the church uh, that, um, that have uh, uh, found ways to support this campaign and all the ministries of the church. Uh, over this year. We're just so, so grateful. We had set uh, a couple goals, uh, the first of which was uh, $950,000. And we, we were, when we did our first announcement of kind of lead gifts and advanced gifts, we were almost there. And we blew past that. Uh, and we're very close to the next goal that we set, which was $1.1 million. I still think we might hit that in the coming weeks. I think, uh, I think we understand that uh, this project, what this project means for the future ministry of this church. And uh, through this uh, through this season, the exciting times are ahead. So uh, there may be a few more a few more uh, gifts. It's not too late to participate. Uh, uh, should you should you feel called in the coming months to do so? But we're so thankful for uh, the generosity of this church, the generous hearts uh, here, and just the passion uh, uh, for to see Grace Church's ministry continue to grow and blossom like that parable of the talents. Um, uh, as we continue to to use what God's given us to be a blessing 
uh, to our community and to others, to the lives of the, uh, this community uh, and all those that we touch. Uh, so thank you so much, and we're excited. Uh, this week and in the coming next three weeks, uh, if, for those who had made commitments, we sent them a letter letting them know that these four Sundays from now through December 6th are our first fruit Sundays. So we're encouraging people to make their first gift to the campaign, to begin their uh, giving process, to set up online giving uh, and things like that so that we can get this underway. Uh, and we are excited. We're going to be giving you um, lots more information. As time goes on about our timeline, uh, building committee is now going to be kicking back into gear during the next phase of development for our plans, and soon we'll be announcing when, for example, our uh, groundbreaking and things like that will be, so sometime in the spring. We're very excited about that, um, excited, to, uh, excited for what lays, lies ahead, uh, even as we travail through uh, this COVID winter uh, that, we're, that we're in. As Lent ends and Easter begins, uh, lots of exciting things, I think, will be going on at Grace Church in 2021. So friends, uh, now we draw our attention to the altar uh, and to this moment where we come before God's presence in the sacrament of bread and wine. Uh, we want to remind you that these gifts are God's gifts for all of God's people. And so you are most welcome to come forward and to receive the bread. Uh, just put your hands forward like this. Ask uh, If you need gluten-free bread, just ask me as you come forward and we can take care of you. Um, and uh, if, if uh, you you prefer to just receive a blessing and a prayer, you can come forward and just cross your arms over your chest like that. Uh, for those of you at home, we have a special prayer to articulate your desire to draw close to God in this sacrament for those of you who cannot be here. So we have a special prayer to include you. Well, friends, we now come before God and offering our life and labor. Uh, uh, we uh, invite you as we have enjoy the musical gifts and just a great offertory song today. Uh, to also give to support the ongoing annual ministry, annual ministry budget of the church. So you could do so at graceyukon.org slash giving or here in the basket in the church as you come forward. We thank you for all your generosity and support for this ministry. Let us ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Please stand. Praise God from whom. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat this, all of you. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenants, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, your gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. And unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
friends, for those of you at home, we have a special prayer for you to join in, expressing your desire to draw near to God's grace in this sacrament. And those of us in this room, we'll say it along with you just so that we are totally knit together and joining you in our worship today. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at this altar, we offer you praise and thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life. For the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection. For the means of grace and the hope of glory. And together, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, soul, and mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom in an ending peace. Amen. You may be seated and you'll be ushered forward to receive. Friends, please stand with me and let us pray. This post-communion prayer is 
our thanksgiving to God for these sacraments and a reminder that we are now sent forth into the world. So let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Now let us go out and bless the, bless the world, loving and serving our God and neighbor. Thanks be to God. Thanks so much for joining us today.